Here at headquarters ISAF, it's the hype of activity this morning as NATO and Afghan chiefs gather together for the ISAF commander handover ceremony. In only a matter of hours, General Allen will be leaving this building behind me and General Dunford will be taking over. Throughout his 19-month tour in Afghanistan, General Allen has perhaps overseen one of the toughest periods for NATO troops as they've battled an ever-evolving insurgency whilst transitioning over to the Afghan forces and balancing combat with diplomacy. The handover ceremony was a time of reflection of the success and hard work put in by the general. In his speech, he was proud to confirm that in the NATO summit in Chicago, 50 nations had pledged their support for the future security of Afghanistan. And at the Tokyo conference on Afghanistan, 100 nations had pledged 16 billion US dollars to the country. He also spoke of the visible success and progress since the campaign began, but said it can't be easily marked. Our victory here may never be marked by a parade or a point in time on a calendar when victory is declared. This insurgency will be defeated over time by the legitimate and well-trained Afghan forces that are emerging today, who are taking the field in full force this spring. Afghan forces defending Afghan people and enabling the government of this country to serve its citizens. This is victory. This is what winning looks like. As General Dunford takes the reins, he inherits a post held by 16 previous NATO allies since December 2001. He will now be the last ISAF chief in command as troops withdraw by 2014. And he faces difficult times ahead. As he brings a 13-year mission to a close, he has the threat of increased insider attacks and the continued effort for the Afghan National Security Forces to take the lead. Yet he's optimistic and keen to follow in his predecessor's path. Today we're saying goodbye to a great commander and we're changing command, but today is not about change, it's about continuity. What's not changed is the will of this coalition. What's not changed is the discipline and the spirit of the team. What's not changed is the growing capability of our Afghan partners, the Afghan National Security Forces. What's not changed is our commitment to accomplish the mission. And more importantly, what's not changed is the inevitability of our success. The ANSF is considered to be the key to the success of the country when troops leave. The Afghanistan Minister of Defense spoke of his gratitude to General Allen and expressed confidence that the Afghan forces will be able to independently handle security matters post-2014. Our confidence in the future comes from three major factors. A force now with strong will and determination to take over the security responsibility, an unwavering public support it enjoys, and a long-term international support to its sustainability. Sustainability is the buzzword here, and although the end is in sight, the new commander still has a long way to go before the campaign is over. The Deputy Commander of ISAF and Commander of the British Forces here in Afghanistan, General Nick Carter, attended the ceremony this morning and I was able to catch up with him afterwards. I started by asking him about the legacy of General Allen and also the challenges ahead for the new ISAF commander. Well, General Allen has really presided over the first four out of the five steps of the so-called transition process. And what he's had to manage is a significant reduction in US forces, some 33,000 went home during the course of last summer. And he's had to manage the increasing preeminence of the Afghans in terms of taking charge of their future and their destiny. And what do you think the challenges are going to be for General Dunford as, as we go on? Well, the nearer you get to the deadline, um, the more interesting it becomes. First of all, because it focuses minds. Um, and what you see at the moment is having to manage Afghan uncertainty. Um, and whilst we've had the commitments that have been made at Chicago and Tokyo. Um, Afghans are nonetheless very worried about what will happen at the end of 2014. So I think the greatest challenge that General Dunford will have to manage over the course of the next 23 to 22 months is how we keep Afghans confident that the international community's commitment will be there into what's called the decade of transformation. Now, if there is a surge of Taliban activity once troops leave, 
How do you feel the Afghan forces will deal with that and do you think they'll keep their confidence? Well, first of all, I think it's increasingly unlikely that the Taliban would re-emerge in the way in which they did in 2003 and 2004. This country has changed significantly over the last 10 years and I've now on my third one-year tour here and I've seen it from 2002 all the way through to today. And what's striking is the extent to which technology is now prevalent here. 20 million mobile telephone users, 6 million internet users, um, a lot of girls in school, 2.2 million now in school, uh, 70,000 people in secondary education. Um, I wouldn't say it's on an irreversible path, but this is a country that is now progressive. And if the Taliban did come back as a political force, it would have to seize more of the middle ground than perhaps it might have done in the past. And I think that is changing the way it is behaving. So in a sense, I think that's less likely to be one of the scenarios. I think the scenario that we need to watch for is this scenario of uncertainty, uh, and that's what we have to manage. Our British troops are very much based in Helmand, and that's where our campaign has been, but there's 50 nations in NATO that are working together. Can you give us a bigger picture of the whole of Afghanistan? No, quite. I mean, Helmand's been a very important part of what has happened here. Um, but the plain fact is that when you look more broadly at Afghanistan, um, it's in a different place to what it was even two, three, four years ago. The Afghan security forces are now much better led and better organised than they ever were. Um, in large parts of Afghanistan, 87% of the population now is under the security lead of the Afghan security forces. Um, and we expect that um, as we pass through this spring and into the autumn, 100% of the Afghan population will be under the lead of the Afghan security forces. Uh, and what we also see is that whilst there are still serious incidents occur and Kabul is often threatened and you see these um, very difficult incidents happening, the plain fact is that 90% of the Afghan population rarely now encounters violence. Um, and so much of the violence, probably 40 to 50% of it, is contained in only five to 10 districts in Afghanistan. So for the average Afghan, life is really very different now. Uh, and they are able to look towards economic development to increasing their GDP, which has grown by one or 2% every year for the last five years, and frankly, looking to a better future. Now, we know the PBs are closing quite rapidly now, um, but is it true that Camp Suit is actually being built upon to make even bigger? Um, I don't think we've made any decisions on how our footprint will look like into the longer term future. We do know that we have um, a reasonably aggressive plan to reduce our infrastructure in Helmand in line with the transitional process to Afghans. And the Afghans are taking over many of the bases that we once occupied. And we expect that by the end of this year, we'll be down to very few bases in central Helmand and we'll be concentrated very much in Bastion. As to what our presence looks like up in Kabul, um, again, I think it's too early to say. We know that we're committed to the Afghan Army Officer Academy out at Karga. And I suspect that we'll have other appointments and posts in Kabul, but the full detail of it is yet to be fully worked through. With regards to other bases like Camp Bastion, Lashkar and Kandahar, are there plans yet on what will happen to those bases if they will be handed over to the Afghans? No, because um, until such time as we know what the NATO follow-on mission will look like, it's impossible to say what infrastructure will be needed to support it. It's been confirmed now that by the end of this year, 3,800 British troops will be leaving. How is that reduction going to take place? Well, um, we will probably retain similar numbers to what we have at the moment through the periods of high operational tempo in the summer. And then we would look next autumn to reduce the numbers so that by the end of the year, we're down at the figure of around 5,000.